What's up, it's your boy DW, bringing you tech, gadget, product reviews, and more. Today, we're gonna take a look at what might be considered the best budget beginner electric skateboard of 2018. What? The WowGo 2S. Electric skateboards. You might have seen one or two, or even quite a few recently in your neighborhood. With the popularity of booster boards made by famous YouTubers like Casey Neistat, the industry has really taken off. A lot of new companies are emerging from around the world to capitalize on the bandwagon. There are quite a few from China right now who are building competitive e-boards at a much discounted price. Today we're going to take a look at one of them. It is the WowGo 2S. Now this is not an unboxing video or initial impressions video. I had the board for over two months and I thoroughly wanted to test out everything before giving you this complete review. Here you can take a look at the full board. Uh, you can tell this is the front of the board by the W logo. And as the grip tape goes all the way to the back over here, this is the back section. And you can see that the grip tape actually gets more aggressive. There's two sections over here. Here, I think the reason for this more aggressive grip tape is to give you more stability as you guys are accelerating and going top speed, or even for braking, right? So this way your foot won't slide off easily. In the middle over here, or a little bit slightly towards the left of the middle, uh, we have this, um, cut out over here that you can actually grip and hold on to and carry your board on the side. Alright, let's turn it over and take a look in the back. Okay, we got uh, two enclosures in the back. Uh, this one over here is where the battery is stored and the uh, charging port is right over here. You have to remove this uh, rubber flap over here and then you can charge it. It takes around an hour and a half uh, to charge it from zero to max depending on the size of the battery. On this side, we have the enclosure for the uh, ESC. Uh, controls the hub motors over here. You can see the cables running through it. And a uh, note about these enclosures, I think it's been tested to be waterproof, or no, not fully waterproof, but splash proof, or they you know, pour some water on it and it seems to be working fine. Um, I haven't really tested thoroughly, uh, although I did go over some uh, small puddles on the road and that's fine. It's still everything's working properly. Uh, these we got uh, 90 millimeter wheels over here, uh, polyurethane wheels, and they've been holding up pretty well. I've been riding this for over two months and not many scratches, uh, not much dents to it. Um, I know it's kind of dirty right now because I've been riding, but once you wipe it off, it looks almost new. At first, I had a fear that I'm going to have to replace these after a few months, but it seems uh, pretty strong in holding up and I think it's going to probably last a uh, good amount of time before changing. Um, the trucks that came with it is actually these trucks in the back over here. You can see they're thicker. They're more, seems more heavy duty, but uh, it might just be the weight. I did change my trucks, uh, so you can see that they are Paris trucks over here. Just to give a little bit more comfort and to make it a little bit easier to carve. Uh, The bushings I replaced with the uh, the Paris uh, bushings that came uh, with the Paris trucks. The initial bushings were green, which I don't have here on display, but they're okay. The bearings over here, the bearings are zealous bearings. Uh, they're supposed to be an upgrade from their previous design. All right, so let's talk about hub motors for a second. These hub motors do have regenerative uh, braking. That means if you're going in, uh, downhill and you're uh, uh, braking, it should generate some power uh, or energy back to the battery. And as far as I'm concerned, it's very minimal and it doesn't really affect it too much, uh, but it's a nice fancy term to have. One positive about hub motors is low maintenance. Uh, there's no belts to change. Everything's inside in this hub over here. But if anything happens and it do break, you do need to replace the entire hub motor instead of just uh, belts uh, found in other types of belt-driven boards. I really have no issues with these uh, motors so far, so uh, no problems I can foresee. And because uh, this board is so inexpensive, uh, I can easily buy a replacement and be okay with that. An additional added benefit of uh, hub motors is that if the battery do get depleted, you can still ride it like a regular skateboard and push off it and uh, ride it home. Whereas belt drive here is a little bit more difficult to um, a push or kick with it and you might have to carry it instead. 
All right, I'm gonna get my remote and just show you how um, uh, the motors and wheels spin. First, let me just turn it on for a second. So you hold on to this G button. And this is the power switch over here. Just hold it for a couple seconds. It should pair up. So I'll start with the uh, beginner mode. Just pull this out of grass a little bit, if possible. You can hear that. Okay, let's go to the medium mode. Now get closer so you can hear it. And let's go to the last and pro mode. Okay, a note about the batteries over here. Uh, you can actually choose from three different batteries. Uh, I got the medium one. The first one is a Samsung battery that goes 10 to 12 miles. That was range. Um, I got the LG one, which is 12 to 14. And there's a uh, you know, super battery, the Sanyo battery, goes from 15 to 18. So everything depends on your budget and price point you want to pay for it. So I opt out for the medium battery just because I found it's a good value between price and range. The board overall is built pretty solid, uh, but there is a few things that could be improved on. Uh, these screws over here are just sticking out. It doesn't look too clean or professional. You can see it all around here. The screws tend to be quite long. And on the other side over here, uh, some of these screws are just not even. Some of them stick out a little bit more or goes in deeper than the other ones. Uh, you can see this one over here is popping out quite a bit. I can try to fix them but um, uh, by screwing it tighter, but it's really, I think, their job to do so. But other than that, it doesn't really affect its performance. It's pretty solid and it rides very smoothly. All right, let's take a look at the uh, remote control. Uh, this is the remote over here. We have a similar design to the boosted board. I think pretty much they just uh, try to clone it as best they can because they know that's probably the best remote out there. Uh, this is a little smaller version. Uh, we've got the G button over here, it acts as a power button. You hold it down for around two to three seconds, it'll turn on the remote. And when it's on, like right now, um, you can just press it and it shows the battery indicator. Uh, so there's four bars of battery, I'm down to three bars, around 75%. The Wi-Fi signal over here is a solid red dot. That means I'm connected to the board. And this over here, this uh, lower button, just changes the speed mode of the um, of the board. So uh, the way you tell the speed mode is when uh, by the speed the light is going up. So click it once. Uh, that's the fast mode. I'll start from the beginning. So this is uh, slow mode or beginner mode. Uh, this is the medium mode. And one more time, this is the uh, fastest pro mode over here. Only three modes to choose from, but uh, I think that's plenty enough. On the side over here, the top part is to go forward. If you uh, if you push this down over here, you actually accelerate to go backwards. So you have an option over here. So I usually I mainly leave it on on going forward. I rarely I rarely go reverse. Uh, over here, um, same thing. In like the boosted, um, you push it up to accelerate. Uh, I don't want to do it right now just because the wheels might go, but let me turn it off first. Again, turn it off, just hold down this button for a few seconds, all the lights goes off. It's fine. But to go accelerate, just push it forward. And there's a little tension in there, and, and it's a nice tension, in that you don't accidentally push it uh, all the way to the max right away. So you push it forward, and I would gradually put, push it forward if this is your uh, first few times riding the board. And you can pull it back for braking. So it's all about the, uh, the pressure you put into it and the speed you push in if you want a gradual or, or a faster acceleration, acceleration or braking. And it's a nice, uh, comfortable remote. It fits in the hand nicely. Uh, both righties and lefties should be fine over here. All right, this is the back of it. All right, that's the charging port over here. Uh, they do recommend you charge it at a low, uh, with a low amp charger. Uh, I think they recommend charging using um, maybe your computer or laptop USB charger. All right, 
We've got some background music in the back. Uh, here's a nice uh, little strap uh, around your wrist so you don't lose your remote. Let's do the notable flex test. Uh, the deck is made out of seven layers of maple and one layer of bamboo. It provides a nice flex, so very comparable to boosted boards and other similar boards. Uh, this will definitely absorb some shocks and give you a more smooth and comfortable ride. Let's take a look at a few ways you can carry the board. You can carry it with the handle and the weight distribution seems pretty good. It hasn't shifted too far to one side or the other and it's uh, fairly comfortable for a short duration. You can also carry it by lifting the side. Um, this is not as comfortable as it seems and I do not recommend carrying it this way. But my favorite way to carry it around is actually taking it and rolling it like a luggage, holding onto one end and dragging the other end on the floor. And this is my preferred method. Let's talk about performance. The acceleration and braking is super smooth, super smooth move. Um, it's a slow, steady incline in speed. Uh, there's no jerkiness to it. It's not gonna throw you off the board. It's not a quick accelerate. It's actually a nice curve they, they put on the ESC over here. Very, very gentle. And uh, it's a pro and con uh, for uh, people new into the e-boards or uh, starting out beginners. Um, you're going to love this feature, it's going to transition you pretty well. You're not going to get that quick force that's going to pull the board underneath you and just uh, fly off. Right? So um, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna feel pretty comfortable getting into it. In the same way, it's a con if you do want that more aggressive acceleration to get that uh, nice uh, you know, 0 to 20 in like 10 seconds or so. Oh, uh, this board is not as fast or speedy as the other ones out there. So uh, you can pick and choose, but if you definitely want that uh, acceleration speed, you might want to look into other boards where it's a little bit faster off the start. Uh, the braking is the same. It's a smooth curve. As long as you don't slam the brake button, you're not going to fly forward on the board over here. Just give it a nice smooth, just test it out quite a bit until you get used to it. But overall, I find the braking very smooth and it'll you know, get me a stop when I need to stop. Uh, the braking distance might be a little bit longer than other types of boards like, you know, like bell drive driven boards. Just because those uh, boards tend to brake kind of hard, again, there's a pro and con onto it. Uh, if you want that smooth braking, which I prefer just because uh, safety is more of concern for me, then uh, you know, I would choose this board and this type of style. The top speed of the board is advertised at 23 miles per hour, so uh, let's take it out and, and give it a test. We've got this uh, straight flat path ahead of us, so we're going to try to do a speed test and see how fast this guy can go. Uh, at the same time, we'll try to get my watch to cooperate with us and try to get record to speed if possible. Uh, I'll try my best, so we'll see what happens. One, two, three. I did use a different app to track it at the same time. Uh, so let's see if this thing actually tells me how fast we're going. Okay, I wonder if you can see this. I'm gonna try to zoom in. So uh, I'm using the Strava app to track actually that run over there and see how fast I was going. And you can see over here, the max speed was 24.4. So it's uh, pretty close to uh, what we're getting on my watch. Um, so we average it out, it's around 23. This is a hill in my neighborhood, it's around 15% gradient. Uh, we're gonna, so we're gonna test out this Walgo and see how fast or how slow we climb up this hill over here. Here we go. 
we go. One, two, three. There it is, take a look back down. And that's where we came up from. All right, so uh, does hill just fine. So let's talk about what I like about the board and what I don't like about the board. Uh, the first major concern I have when purchasing an electric skateboard is safety, right? Am I gonna be comfortable and safe on the board? For this board, uh, no problem. It checks the box. Um, what I love is the acceleration curve and also the braking curve. That is nice and smooth. It's not abrupt, right? When I accelerate, eight is not gonna. It's not too jerky. It's not gonna. The board is gonna fly underneath my feet, eight. And when I brake, it's not too sharp where I'm gonna fly forward or right, and hit and slam my face on the ground. Another thing is the connection between the remote control and the board. Uh, so far, over two months of riding zero disconnects no disconnects and i'm really really satisfied because that because i did hear people lose connection with the board and they had to bail out or fly off i like the design of the remote i know it is a boosted uh clone remote but it worked it probably has the best design out there the boosted boards and this one makes a pretty good copy of that type of remote control it's in your hand extremely comfortable and everything's very simple. Just uh, one main throttle or trigger, you know, push up to accelerate and, and pull back to brake. And uh, you know, it just works. It's a good, consistent remote control and it won't give you any disconnects. I think the speed and range for this board is very good. Uh, you can hit top speed around 23 miles an hour. I think that's the same as the booster board or maybe one mile difference. So you're getting the same top speed performance. The second is the range. The range for my board is 12 to 14 miles. I'm consistently getting 12 miles range on just regular riding. If I'm being more aggressive, it's gonna come down to around 10 miles, but the flexibility is there. All right, compared to the major brands, if you want that same range, you're gonna to have to put out a few hundred extra dollars just to get an extended battery or an extra battery. And even for this board, if you do want more than around 14 mile range, you can always upgrade to the super battery, the Sanyo battery that'll give you around 15 to, uh, to 18 miles, and that costs around $160 more. And the biggest positive of this board is the price. You can't beat this price. I bought this board with the medium battery, and it costs around $460, $470 ish uh, the price i believe hasn't changed that much from the website the price is amazing it's one third the price of the major brand so you are getting same or similar performance top speed uh, probably better range a good remote and a solid board for one third the price all right of course the the quality could be slightly better but uh so far it's not really affecting in, uh, the safety of the ride at this price, if it does break, I can just easily buy another board and still spend less than the premium brand. Let's talk about some negatives, and some of these are minor, and some of them I'm just nitpicking a little bit. With concerns to the build quality, it's pretty sturdy, it's robust, it's good, but, but a little minor details with the screws sticking out here and there. Another one is uh, the trucks. It could be better. You can't turn as sharply as you want to. Right. In uh, crowded situations and you need to zigzag across uh, people or just making that sharp turn, uh, you're not going to be able to do with these types of trucks. So what I did was I bought Paris V2 trucks and it cost around 50 bucks. And I've been turning and carving much more easily after the upgrade. The board can get you up hills, but you are going to have a decline in power and speed going up the hill. Also, if you want to stop on a hill or stop at a slope, you're not going to come to a complete stop. Your gravity is going to take place and your, and your board will still roll down slowly. 
So an easy fix is actually what I do is when I come to a stop or close to a stop, I just step off the board. I'll wait until I need to go again, step back on, and I'm on my way. The last thing I want to mention is battery sag. So battery sag happens when your battery is around 50% or less. And uh, what it does is your acceleration uh, becomes compromised. Uh, you're not going to have the torque, you're not going to have the acceleration as you had before. And that's mainly due to the, uh, the battery type that I received. It's the LG battery and it's known for having uh, battery sag. If you do upgrade to the Sanyo battery, it's uh, less prone to battery sag. You might have better performance there, but the, uh, the price is slightly higher. So with all that said, do I like the board? Do I recommend the board? Heck yes, I do. This board is enjoyable. It is fun. And when I get off my board, I think about when's the next time I can get back on and ride again. And for the price, it's unbeatable. So if you're looking for a board, especially if this is your first board you're looking at, or if you're a beginner, definitely check out WowGo 2S. I think you guys would definitely enjoy the board and have a great fun time riding out. If you guys have any experience with the board, I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment below or any questions you might have, and I'll be sure to get back at you. If you enjoyed the video, click on the like button below. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, click on the subscribe button. Until next time, take care and be safe.